I'm thinking about this too hard and I just gotta let it go and relax. <sighs> technically, this is my first vlog, technically, because all of the other videos that I've posted on the internet have been for my show, Security, Privacy, and a lot of other bullshit. If you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. It's on my page. Um, and I get nervous about doing this like vlogging thing because sometimes I feel like I'm going to get judgment from the security industry and perhaps be looked at as a not so credible expert because I like vlogging. <laughs> but who knows? Uh, we're just shooting shots left and right. Everywhere we're shooting shots. And this is my first video. I'm Tizine. Thank you so much for coming to my YouTube channel. But this video specifically um, is supposed to be my reflection about Ramadan, my banging ass Eid party that we had, and the reflections of the holy month. Hi, everybody. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan is tomorrow and again I have so many different thoughts and feelings things I want to say I want to unpack for those of you who know and for those of you who don't know Ramadan is the beginning of a month of fasting for Muslims all across the world and we fast from sun up until sundown and no we're not even allowed to drink water and during the month of Ramadan uh, it, it's extremely meditative, spiritual, a time to look inward. And there are hundreds of different stories that make Ramadan what it is. But it is a time of pure intention. Started Ramadan with so much intention. Um, ended Ramadan with the same intention, but started with a lot of intention to fast and pray. And to do all of the awesome things that you can do. But most importantly for me, be reflective and as intentional as possible. It was so hard. Fasting is so hard. And I grew up Muslim, um, but I didn't really have a relationship with my faith until recently, I would say, in my life. Um, and it's still building and growing and I'm figuring it all out. Uh, but the one thing that is tried and true, is that the American phrase? Tried and true. Part of my immigrant. <laughs> really am appreciative of the experience and how Ramadan allowed me to slow down and consider what is important to me as an individual. When you can't eat and drink water during the day, uh the little things don't matter as much and you think about like more at least me personally i thought about more like overarching general themes in my life um and this is something that i've been thinking about with my friends for a while now um beating the capitalism out of our bodies uh living to work or like being a part of a larger mission and I like entered Ramadan already burnt out and then fasting and trying to do everything like I feel like burnt me out more and then I got my period and in Islam when you get your period as a woman or anybody that experiences periods you don't have to fast and then voila it was Eid <laughs> so it, like it was super slow and it went by really fast at the same time I just want to share a little bit of this entire journey and talk about the lessons that I learned and how it affected my personal life, my professional life, and my perspective into the rest of this year. Oh, I can't believe I'm awake and I feel awake. It's 4.30 a.m. I'm drinking my coffee. I should be drinking a lot of water. I will. And then, yeah, I'm gonna get my day started. Guess who joined? Kara! I'm so happy, this is so exciting. This has now become a Ramadan vlog account and I just woke up from a nap, it's 11 o'clock. 
And um, I took a cold shower because I'm pretending to be my best friend, Nortagori, who jumps in her pond outside. I don't have a pond. I only got that. Um, but I'm feeling okay. It felt like I was high, like jumping out of the shower. That was really crazy. Um, we're still fasting. We're going strong. Um, wow, this, the bathroom doesn't look too cute right now, but that's fine. So yeah, 11 o'clock, let's see how it goes. Day one, Ramadan, over and out. Okay, day one, it's 6.38. We are headed to my mom's on Long Island. And I don't even know how I made it happen, but I made kebabs and a salad and I do some juice and I'm feeling good. I feel okay, I feel well rested, I don't feel hungry. How are you feeling, Carlo? Peachy. You look good. You look like a date. Ooh, what kind? <laughs> when I want to eat. <laughs> This morning during Suhoor, I did not wake up and drink water and coffee and I'm like, I guess I told myself at that point that I wasn't going to fast like this morning and I'd made the decision, but then I woke up thinking like, okay, I can fast, I can do this. And I was going to, I even called my sister to get reassurance from her. Um, and I broke my fast and I feel really guilty and I just prayed, but trying to work through the guilt. But inshallah, I'll fast tomorrow. Um, this is hard, yo. This is hard. This is introspective. This is definitely deep. But I don't want shame and guilt to be attached to this process and this experience. Because I think that is what has kept me from doing this to begin with. And I'm not going to allow that to happen. Allah is all forgiving. And I'm going to try again tomorrow. So I started off real strong. I was recording me waking up at four in the morning for suhoor and eating and staying awake and then going about my day. Um, and then I started like feeling the guilt and the shame and man, man, oh man, man, oh man, the guilt and the shame is so strong and so deeply rooted. It's unreal. Even though we know that Ramadan and, and fasting and all of these things come from your pure intention and from yourself and it's your relationship with God, in my experience in life, religion has never been about my relationship with God, rather like this disciplinary element that was used to drive my behavior throughout my life. So finish your food. If you don't, God will punish you. Do this if you don't, X, Y, Z. So more of like a, a cause and effect element. And it hasn't been until my adult life that I have had the opportunity to reestablish my relationship with the religion. And it really happened after getting married and marrying a revert or convert revert, my husband converted slash reverted the way that Islam looks at it um, to Islam and teaching him helped me learn and it really changed my relationship with God. And my relationship like with myself and God just has been changing this past year and a half. And um, I posted a video last year about Ramadan and the guilt and the shame that I feel um, around prayer and alhamdulillah for growth because although i still feel guilt it's not as deep um because i think i've been able to strongly kind of one push a lot of that out of me it's been a ton of healing work and then two um remind myself that that guilt and shame like it was rooted in, in other elements that had nothing to do with me as an individual. And the more I like am grounded and standing firm in who I am, Alhamdulillah, the less guilt I feel. You know, like the real driving factor with Ramadan for me too was to become excited about it, to be culturally rooted in it. And I got to do all of the things that I wanted to do this year. Last year I was alone in Michigan with my husband that was still going through a lot of learning and unlearning 
Um, and uh, we grew in our relationship and like the support from him looked way different this year than it did last year. Shout out to therapy and growth. This year we're in New York and I had the support of my family and community. Like community is literally everything. <laughs> How do you do anything without community? I don't know. That was a really big lesson learned. That the community drives so much of my purpose and intention. I also learned that it's not about being perfect. And I say this all the time, it doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be consistent. But for some reason, I like don't allow myself to apply that theory when it comes to my spirituality or like intrinsic values. I feel that and it's that guilt and shame that's rooted in it. But um, I don't want to make this too long. I want to share all of the fun stuff. We decorated the house. We like built my DIY plant wall during my disconnect weekend. Um, and we hosted the most epic Eid party that I personally, honestly, have ever been to, and all my friends said it was the best party ever, and I was never invited to parties growing up because I was never allowed to go to parties, so people stopped inviting me, so this was like my whole life encompassed into one party, which was like just amazing. <music> about breaking my fast uh, probably every hour <laughs> of this day it's 1 p.m. there's still a lot more time and I don't feel so hot from the vaccine still and I haven't fasted the past couple of days um, but I don't know uh, this is so hard. I need everyone to know this is so hard. And if you're struggling, I'm here with you. <sighs> Let's push through. Ramadan taught me that reflection and intention was the most important part. And what I really wanted to be intentional about was building traditions that made me excited about Ramadan. And that's something that I think I missed um, in my upbringing. And when I was talking to my mom, like sometimes I have to watch the way that I speak to her uh, because I in turn will guilt her for not, being, not having been able to provide me with certain experiences that I was looking for, like decorating the house for Ramadan and realizing, you know, they didn't have the money or the funds to do so. Um, and maybe the people that are watching this and you still haven't experienced that like excitement or cultural thing around Ramadan and we see like Christmas being celebrated so intensely in America but not feeling like there's a space for us to equally like celebrate and be excited about Ramadan because our peers don't understand why we don't eat we have to answer like microaggressions we have to answer all of these weird questions that feel like an attack uh, to our character and stuff that it makes it hard to be excited for this, it makes it hard. But I'm so thankful for the community, for the fact that Alhamdulillah right now I'm working for myself. Um, and I didn't have to answer a lot of those weird questions and I was able to share elements of Ramadan that people outside of the religion and culture were able to implement into their lives, like especially with the Cyber Collective team, like it was so cool to have friends and work with a group of individuals that celebrated the differences versus like in my past, um, you know, calling out the differences and making me feel real awkward about not eating and uh, drinking all day long. Um, and I feel like that's why I pushed out really owning Ramadan, um, Growing up, wow, just had a real reflective moment, inner child trauma. Hmm.